Well, let's start with surgery. We already talked about it. A woman who has a breast amputation is never going to be the same again. Never. She will never see herself the same way. She will never act the same way. She will never feel the same way. For women who have lumpectomy and radiation, they deal with a fibrotic, deformed, painful breast for the rest of their life. There's no benefit in terms of survival with radiation, and yet we do it regularly. Now, women who have radiation to their breast have an increased risk of heart disease, not just of vascular disease of their heart, but cardiomyopathy of the heart because the, the muscle of the heart, the actual heart itself gets fibrotic from the radiation. They wow. deal with bone disease. They deal with lung disease. And these are not inconsequential things. These change the quality and the duration of their life. And then talk about chemotherapy. I mean, chemotherapy changes everything for a woman. It changes her microbiome. It changes her gut. It changes her brain. It changes her bones. It changes her heart. It changes her blood vessels. These are serious things. And most women will have a what's called a hormone positive cancer, which let me just say that it is normal to have estrogen receptors on breast cells. So, you know, it's not such a headline that there are cancers with estrogen and progesterone receptors on them. That is a variation of normal. But when we give these women hormone blockade, we're basically shortening their life, giving them heart disease, giving them brain fog, giving them depression, giving them anxiety, making them more likely to have Alzheimer's, giving them osteopenia and osteoporosis. And as many women die every year as a fracture of a complication of a fracture as do of breast cancer. How are we helping? Yes. How are we helping? When we treat women for breast cancer, they are two to three times more likely to die of heart disease than a woman who was not treated for breast cancer. How are we helping? And literally with mammogram, with regular mammographic screening, we're causing 5,000 breast cancers every year. 5,000 wow. breast cancers just from screening with mammogram. What are we doing? What are we doing? How are we helping these women? And the answer is that we're not. We're helping industry a whole hell of a lot, right? Because that breast cancer screening, that creates a lot of customers. Yep. And when we look at the data of if we are really finding things early, we find things about four or five millimeters smaller on mammogram than when people find them on physical examination. That is meaningless. Yeah, that's a small amount. That's it's meaningless. Less, that's less than a, the size of an eraser head. Yeah meaningless. So we are not helping women with mammogram. I don't believe that anyone should have a mammographic screening exam. No, I'm not saying that you'll never have another mammogram again, because, you know, if you find something in your breast, that's considered a diagnostic study. And I do think that there's some role, you know, I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe there's a role for it in diagnostic study. I would argue that an ultrasound is better and far less harmful. So I don't know that you need it. But if your doctor is absolutely insistent, okay, you know, may, maybe that is a, a situation where it is permissible, but no one should be getting screening mammograms for any reason ever. I'm with it you. cannot help you. It can only hurt you and it will hurt you. And I'm not just talking about the compression, which is traumatic and horrible. I'm not just talking about the pain, right? Because we're tough. Women are tough. And if we know things are for the good, we can do hard things. So it's not about the trauma of the mammogram. It's not about the pain of the mammogram. To me, it's about we are radiating you. We are radiating you. Radiation is a known carcinogen. We know that it causes cancer. And the amazing thing is that you can ask 100 doctors, does radiation cause cancer? Every single one of them will say yes. You ask those same doctors, do mammograms cause cancer? They'll say no, right? I'm not, I'm not irradiating my tatas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not and doing you, it. As well, you shouldn't. 
And you know, I hear the argument all the time, oh, well, it's not that much radiation, just a little bit of radiation. It's no different than flying cross country. Yes, when you fly cross country on an airplane, there is scattered radiation around you without mm -hmm. question. That is wholly different than coning down that radiation yep. and focusing it on the tissues of your breast. We are not comparing apples to apples. It's a different beast yep. and it is a beast and it is hurting people. It's destroying lives. It is leading to over biopsy, over diagnosis, over treatment, and we are not saving lives. And we all took an oath to first do no harm, and this is hurting people. So the time for mammogram, as far as I'm concerned, is over, over. Now, fortunately, there are other great options, yeah, and I never it. like to present a problem without providing a solution. So for years, people embrace thermography, and I am not anti-thermography, but we need to understand what thermography is. So thermography looks for a heat signal, and that heat is associated with inflammation. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes it will be reflective of a cancer, sometimes it won't. And there are some cancers that are not very quickly growing and not terribly inflammatory and just won't turn up on thermography. And to me, that's okay too, right? That test is not a screening test for cancer. It's a test to identify inflammation. And I think it's a great tool for you to know where you are and where your body is in terms of inflammatory load. And I think it's a great tool for a place to start. Where do you need to focus? What is going on in your body? What is happening? But if you want to use that as a screening tool for breast cancer, it should be done in conjunction with an ultrasound. And ideally, it should be done at the same time by the same provider oh, so that cool. they can interpret those studies together. Yeah, that's good. That's good advice.